Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the dorsal wrist muscles, also known as the extensors of your wrist joint. So first, we'll classify them. There are the primary muscles, secondary muscles, and then there are few more muscles which don't really play a major role when it comes to wrist extension. So before we start with the muscles, let me talk about the retinaculum. Now, this retinaculum it kind of forms a tunnel and it is over your extensors of the wrist joint. And what it does is it has septas, which basically divide all the wrist muscles into different compartments. And the extensor retinaculum, along with the tunnels, it is attached to the ligament below it. That is the carpal ligament, which are present right above the bones. It is attached to that, which provides stability to all the tendons and prevents bowstringing. That means the tendons are attached properly so that action can occur. Otherwise, they'll go out of place, right? So it has to it has to be held tightly over here so the action is very effective so that is the role of your extensor retinaculum now that we have discussed about retinaculum let's go on to the muscle so primary muscles are your ecrl that is extensor carpi radialis longus where your radialis indicates it's on the radial side and longus is a longer muscle brevis is a shorter muscle and extensor carpi ulnaris is on the ulnar side extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis they together form the major bulk of the wrist extensors and ecrb especially is a thick and located at the center over here so the major function of your ecrb is it is active in grasping and releasing whereas it is not that active in supination that is grasping and releasing if you do it in a supinated grip it won't be as active it is seen that ECRB, that is the brevis muscle, has a higher moment arm compared to longus because it is more on the medial side. Okay, longus is more on the outer side. You'll see it in the painting that I've done. Next, going to ECRL, that is extensa carpi radialis longus, it has three main functions. That is, it is very high activity in radial deviation. Okay, when there is radial deviation and when you're extending the wrist, that's when the extensor carpi radialis longus has a very high activity. Second one is against ulnar deviation. That means if some force is pushing your wrist into ulnar deviation, resisting that through a radial deviation will be done by your extensor carpi radialis longus. Basically, it creates radial deviation again at the wrist joint. And third is the finger flexion. These are the three areas where ECRL activity will be very high. So the first muscle you can see over here, the blue one, is your extensor carpi radialis longus. It is on the thumb side, right? So it is the radialis longus. And the shorter one is the radialis brevis. Both of them together they go and, and mostly the brevis, it helps in grasping and releasing that part, right? And it is often involved in your tennis elbow. And both of them go and they'll mostly do what? Radial deviation and extension. And then we have the last major muscle that is your extensor carpi ulnaris, which is on the ulnar side. It provides stability to your wrist joint, especially in flexion. And it is connected to the TFCC over here on the ulnar side, where all the ligaments are also present. And this muscle is attached to all the ligaments and these ligaments provided the stability so that it can function in ulnar and extension movement. This kind of stability is not really required on the radial side because there are a lot of ligaments already present on the radial side. Another thing about extensor carpi ulnaris is it is less efficient in pronation position because the moment arm reduces in pronation. Hence, extensor carpi ulnaris is not as efficient compared to a supinated grip. Extensor carpi ulnaris, the green one, it goes on the ulnar side and causes ulnar deviation and extension. And over here, it is connected to the ligaments on this side, which provides it a good stability and prevents excursion. Next, going to the second group of muscle, which are not primary wrist extensor. They are mostly finger extensors. They are the extensor digitorum communis, 
extensor indices proprius and extensor digiti minimi the digiti minimi is that is a little finger and the proprius that is the middle finger both of them they join the extensor digitorum communis and form the main extensor tendon they also cause extension at the wrist without your radial or ulnar deviation and it is specially seen that when extensor digitorum communis activity is high ecrb that i mentioned over here the activity of that muscle will be slightly low extensor digitorum communis this yellow muscle it goes and it causes extension of all the fingers okay all the fingers but along with it there are two more muscles which join one is the extensor indices which causes extension of the middle finger whereas the other one which joins it is your extensor digiti minimi which goes and causes extension of the little finger next the smaller muscles that we he have are extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus over here pollicis means your thumb and longus and brevis as i mentioned over here is a longer and a shorter muscle abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis both of them together can cause radial deviation of the wrist joint how do we know this this was seen because when ulnar side muscles when they were absent they were not counterbalancing the movement that was created on the radial side so basically what i'm trying to say is when you are causing abduction of the thumb or extension of the thumb the ulnar muscles right uh, extensor carpi ulnaris will fire on the ulnar side and will stabilize the wrist so that these muscles on this side can work properly if they are not working what will happen is along with thumb there will be some movement of the wrist also that is happening which will create a very inefficient movement this wrist has to be stabilized for a proper functioning of your thumb muscles that's what it means so the primary action is at the thumb which works with extensor carpi ulnaris to create the movement at the thumb right without any movement at the wrist so when these muscles work your extensor carpi ulnaris on the other side stabilizes the wrist so the movement is purely at the thumb and not at the thumb and the wrist as well right so on over here you can see the red one is your extensors and abductors of the thumb muscle the abductor extensor pollicis muscles you can see them going like this and they are present in this particular area over here so with that we finish off this topic now let's quickly summarize we have under primary muscles ecrl ecrb and ecu your longus and brevis which create major extension at the wrist joint whereas the secondary are extensor digitorum communis indices and minimi these muscles cause extension of the fingers and then your thumb muscles which are counterbalanced by your extensor carpi ulnaris at the wrist joint so that the movement at the thumb is purely a thumb movement and not a wrist movement as well right so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please like share and subscribe to the channel it will really help me out and thank you for watching